Intelligence Report on the Fox Business Network, Trish Regan, the editor of townhall.com, Katie Pavlich, Republican strategist and Fox News contributor, Lisa Booth, and joining us today on the couch to kick off the week, Fox News politics editor and the editor of the Halftime Report, Chris Starwell is here. <laughs> and he is, as he knows, outnumbered. Breathe, my Amazing. friend. Okay, all right. Finding my center space, my happy space. Are you ready? It's President's Day. It is. It I is know. President's Day. I know. It, it, it should be a light, fluffy holiday where we're quite uh, patriotic and introspective, but indeed, much news to get to. So let's kick it off. Growing questions about Russian influence in the 2016 election after special counsel Robert Mueller indicts those 13 Russians. They are accused of undermining our democracy and trying to help then candidate. Donald Trump win. President Trump firing off a series of tweets after the announcement, including one saying, I never said Russia did not meddle in the election. I said it may be Russia or China or another country or group, or it may be a 400 pound genius sitting in bed and playing with his computer. The Russian hoax was that the Trump campaign colluded with Russia. It never did. Thank God for that. Thank God for that expanded character count. And another mentioning the ranking Democrat on the House Intel Committee saying, quote, now that Adam Schiff is starting to blame President Obama for Russian meddling in this election, he is probably doing so as yet another excuse that the Democrats, led by their fearless leader, crooked Hillary Clinton, lost the 2016 election. But wasn't I a great candidate? <laughs> that tweet referencing remarks Congressman Schiff made Friday, saying the Obama administration should have been more aggressive against Russian meddling at the time. Schiff elaborating on that yesterday. I've said all along that I thought the Obama administration should have done more, and indeed when we discovered and we could attribute the conduct to Russia, uh, Senator Feinstein and I took the first steps to make public attribution because at that time we couldn't get the Obama administration to acknowledge the Russian interference. Uh, they were very wary of appearing to be putting their hand on the scale in the election. Now they did. Very interesting uh, introduction there. I, I would just say this as it relates to the uh, senator from the great state of Vermont. It, it does matter, certainly from the White House's perspective, who was in leadership at the time of alleged Russian meddling. Keep in mind, this goes all the way back to 2014, and that means they knew, knew it was possibly happening. President Obama, for example. What about Jim Comey over the FBI, the DNI, Jim Clapper, and, and you could argue the CIA, John Brennan. Did they know this was happening back as far as uh, 2014? And if so, what did they do about what they knew was actually happening? Now, you talked about the president. He is continuing to make the argument that when Rod Rosenstein came out last week and announced those indictments uh, from Bob Mueller, 13 Russians, uh, basically what he has done there is, again, underscore the president's argument that it wasn't the Trump campaign and this was happening to America's political debate long before he even ran for office. Here's his former campaign manager backing him up. Well, the president has a very important point, and the point is that the previous administration, the Obama administration, under Jim Comey's lack of leadership at the FBI, should have been doing something about this, because if they were informed back in May of 2014, now don't forget, Donald Trump came down that beautiful escalator in June of 2015, so was that for 13 months prior to Donald Trump even getting into the race, the Russians were trying to do something to materially change the outcome of our election. Very interesting there from Corey Lewandowski. And by the way, the president also took to Twitter uh, to at least give an attaboy to former special counsel, independent counsel, that is, Ken Starr. He said, thank you to Ken Starr, uh, the Whitewater Independent Counsel, for your insight and powerful words on FISA abuse, Russian meddling, et cetera. Great interview with Fox's uh, Maria Bartiromo. Here's what Starr had to say about that. We're now aiming uh, our uh, guns, so to speak, where they should be aimed. I think we should stop pointing fingers at one another in this country and realize who the real enemy is. The real enemy, according to Starr, is obviously Russia. And I would leave you with this, Kennedy. I think you might find this uh, instructive. People are saying that the Russians were trying to help Donald Trump. You could certainly make the argument that what they were really doing is trying to not just sow discord, but damaged the presumptive winner, which would have been Hillary Clinton. Of course, the tables were turned back on November 8th. Back to you. Kevin, thank you so much for that report. Thank you so much for that report. Now we're going to take it out to the couch for a little bit more discussion. Uh, Chris, 
let's take a look at this because who is more to blame here? Is it uh, the president for not taking a more aggressive stance against Russia mm -hmm. uh, when you know he talks about the disconnect? There is no collusion, he says, between his administration and the Russians. That uh, appears to be uh, reinforced with every indictment and everything we hear from the special counsel. However, uh, now you have even Adam Schiff saying that this campaign to disrupt the election goes back to 2014. Should the Obama administration been more forceful with the intelligence against the Russians? Well, I bet I bet he wishes he had been. Um, I, I like Lewandowski. He says, why didn't they do a better job of stopping the Russians from helping us? And I'm like, guy, you know, uh, we're splitting these hairs so thin now to try to come up with who is more responsible or what's to blame. I will tell you, I will let you in on the dirty secret this president's day about who is to blame for the effectiveness of Russian uh, campaign meddling. Mm -hmm. Every American who degraded the patriotism of their political rivals, every American who clicked on stories that were too good to be true just because they had to believe something really rotten about the other party. This is an inside job. You don't need job. Facebook ads for that. I mean, no. if you're a conservative, <laughs> right. you can go to Salon or Vox or MSNBC. And if you're a liberal, if you want to you see can, how the right. other side is counter-programming. Right. Yeah. And if you're a liberal, you can go over to, and you can hate on wherever you want to go. You can, you can go to Breitbart or you can go to the Daily Caller. You can find outlets where you yeah. can go and hate on them. My point is the Russians couldn't have been successful in this if it were not for the fact that our own small R Republican sense of virtue and yeah. restraint in dealing towards each other and our countrymen hadn't already been degraded so much. We were sitting ducks. Well, I think when you look at the timeline of the Facebook ads, because Democrats have really hitched their wagon to this propaganda because it's the only thing that we've really been able to prove, right? They claim that votes were changed. That has not been proven true. We did see this, you know, the propaganda and the, the money that was poured in by the Russians, which is backed up by this indictment. But when you look at this go maybe weren't pushing one candidate or the other yeah. and that their goal wasn't to change votes, but was to sow this discord in the country, which I think they've been very successful at doing. The past year has been nothing but investigations, Democrats and Republicans going after each other with leaks on Capitol Hill to various outlets with, with information that isn't in context. So the Russians have been successful here, but Bob Mueller deserves credit in t terms of going after these guys, putting it down on paper with these indictments. Yep. The grand jury deserves credit as well. And this is a positive thing that has come out of the special counsel in terms of making sure that Russians know they're on notice and hopefully yeah. All right, uh, so, preventing them from doing it again. But Trish, I, I want to ask you, because when I, I read through the indictments and I, I looked at what these 13 Russians are accused of, and it's, it's uh, wire fraud and uh, identity theft, bank fraud, and a number of other pretty serious crimes, but it also looks like what political operatives do within the political parties we have in this country. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when you're paying people from another country like Russia to give you dirt on a political opponent, it almost looks the exact same. What did the indictments say? To you. Well, I want to just add one layer of context. One layer of context to all of this, and that is historically the Russians have been doing this. All right, and by the way, so have we. I mean, there was a coup down in Venezuela to get rid of Hugo Chavez. I have a feeling back then we had a hand in it. This is, in other words, how the world works. And anyone is incredibly naive to think that the Russians wouldn't want to try and meddle with us. The Obama administration absolutely should have been all over this. They absolutely should have been talking to, by the way, the social media companies that got away with allowing all of this to exist as well. So Facebook doesn't care. Twitter doesn't care. Our government I mean, should these, have made them. I have to say out loud, we should be careful about moral relativism between the United States and Russia and what we do and what they did. Yes, the United States has been involved. And in the bad old days, we did take down governments. In the bad old days, in the United Fruit Company and the CIA days, we absolutely, and Central America and all of Latin America can attest to that black legend, of course. Mm -hmm. But in the current moment, we don't. 
these people to sit and interfere with our dialogue to get into our space. We broadcast well, voice. Chris, maybe America. we should. But, but I, also, I mean, maybe we should if we want to have an influence in China. Okay, we want so, to have so let me ask you this because this this is a, a question that I don't have a sufficient answer to, and that is if President Obama had come out and said the Russians are meddling, they're putting a, a lot of money and resources into pretending to be Americans, uh, they're sowing there, chaos yes. on social media. Be careful what you watch and consume. If he had done that. Hillary Clinton have won. Uh, no, because she didn't step foot in Wisconsin. Hillary, Clinton's, <laughs> Hillary Clinton is responsible for her own loss, and that's the bigger problem with this entire narrative, and I think the basis of the frustration from the Trump administration is that is not what has been portrayed to the American people via the mainstream media. And even on the Facebook ad spending, Byron York has a great article in the Washington Examiner sort of going through this, and this isn't to uh, undermine or this isn't to downplay, rather, uh, the significance of Russian interference, but you look at a state of Wisconsin, and there's something like two thousand dollars spent on Facebook, hundred dollars on each individual voter in the state of <laughs> Iowa, and during the, the Republican primary. So let's just be honest, though, about the fact that that is a nominal amount of money. That doesn't mean that it is not important to pay attention to this. Does that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be concerned about this? Yeah. But the way it's been projected to the media is somehow that these ads won the election for and, President and there, Trump. And, and that is by wrong. the way, there may be correlation in, you know, ad buys and how people may have interfaced with these things on social media. Not about but this, there's not, not a, a cause money, and effect. Though. You cannot say because these ads were bought here and displayed there that it changed people's votes and minds. And no, no but one, that doesn't mean that we no should ignore it. That. I we, agree with you 100 percent, but it doesn't mean we should Iowa. ignore it. And so whether it's the, this <laughs> administration, the Trump yeah. administration, whether it's the Obama administration, they oh, all okay. need to be more proactive about preventing this in the future. Well, we've got new reports that former Vice President Joe Biden is inching closer <laughs> to that 2020 presidential bid. Go ahead and bust out the champagne. Whether the move would help or harm the Democratic Party and whether he could actually win. A series of rallies over the weekend following the Florida shooting massacre. Whether lawmakers will finally be forced to act and whether that would be a good thing. We will discuss from the Capitol. Debate heating up after the horrific high school shooting in Florida. Right now, teenage students from Washington, D.C. are staging a lie-in protest outside the White House to represent the victims and demand gun reform. This as multiple anti-gun rallies span the state of Florida over the weekend. And now teenagers survived last week's attack are calling on people from across the country to march in solidarity next month. March 24th, in every single city, we are going to be marching together as students begging for our lives. This isn't about the GOP. This isn't about the Democrats. This is about the... Pardon this. Our kids, everyday kids just like us, they are students who need to understand that this can very quickly happen to them. And we're doing everything within our power to prevent it from happening to them. But they need to join us and they need to help us get our message across. Some Republican lawmakers say they're on board to pass legislation aimed at protecting against these kinds of attacks. Ah. When you're looking at ways to fix this system, you want to look at uh, measures like fixing the background check system. You also want to, want to understand what broke down and allowed for this individual to go on unattended while other people were raising red flags. Unstable, dangerous people while other people were raising red flags. Unstable, dangerous people who law enforcement and their own family members are flagging, as is the case here, should never have access to a deadly weapon of that sort. Uh, and, and we want to make sure that we can do that in the proper way. White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders says President Trump has spoken to lawmakers on this issue and supports efforts to improve the criminal background check system. But Democratic Congressman Jim Hines says there needs to be change, but he has little faith Congress can get anything done. The facts are incontrovertible here, and I mean, there's just example after example. The problem is people like Marco Rubio and Speaker Ryan, and sad to say, most Republicans in Congress, and to be fair, a few Democrats, um, they can't allow the conversation to go to facts. This is why the NRA puts up videos that try to scare Americans. They go to emotions. They go to fear. You know, uh, people want to take away your guns. Nobody wants to take away people's guns. Well, Chris, we've sure heard a lot uh, about the NRA and about common sense solutions, but it's not exactly clear what that means. Clearly here we had a breakdown in a number of steps. Right. If we don't take human error out of the criminal background check system, are we ever going to prevent 
things like this from happening. Well, I think there's a, a good object lesson here. Uh, there was less interface between the mental health system and the criminal background check so that there was a consolidated database so that gun sellers would be able to know. Now, this wasn't germane in this case. This guy was, would not, th this wouldn't have stopped this killing. But it's something that is commonsensical, uh, is bipartisan, and had all this support. But the House, when the legislation was moving, tacked a poison pill onto the legislation and said, you have, I think it was for full reciprocity for mm -hmm. concealed carry around the country, which they knew was a dead letter when it got to the Senate. And so it died. Now the White House is coming back in support of this legislation. Uh, Senator John Cornyn, uh, who is uh, certainly no slouch on the Second Amendment front and probably the leading voice for gun control right. uh, from uh, Connecticut, uh, Murphy, they're coming together, they're behind this legislation. The lesson here for both sides is, just because you can't do everything that you want to do, don't let that stop you from doing something. Well, don't let that stop you from doing something. I want something. to just reference for the, the viewers and the audience, on the left side of your screen, we're watching the die-in of students in Washington, D.C., outside of the White House. Uh, they're pro This is in response to the Florida shooting. Kennedy, there is a question here, too, not about just the Second Amendment, but about civil liberties. Yeah. And big questions about what and who decides that someone is mentally unfit to own a firearm? It goes just beyond uh, the Second Amendment. And, you know, we've talked on the couch a lot about, especially since the shooting, about this violent manifestation of mental illness. Mm -hmm. and, and that is what is most serious. And, and that's what you see across the board with these mass shooters. And there were so many symptoms and so many people who knew that this person was deeply disturbed and was violent and was going to act on those violent urges. So you have a breakdown there. But also one of the problems is, uh, and, and I understand wanting to clarify the background check system mm -hmm. because it is universally known that this person should not have had a gun and something went wrong. And there should have been some report from a psychologist or law enforcement or the FBI that issued a restraining order so this person was blocked from buying a gun on his own. That didn't happen. That, that is a, a big failure and break. And there are people, you know, say someone's agoraphobic. Does that mean they don't have the, a constitutionally protected right to right. De defend themselves? And it also demeans those who might be suffering from a mental illness and that does, does not impair their I capacity. Think, I think it's also important to point out uh, the Senator Cornyn bill comes from the Texas shooting, and that's what that uh, piece of legislation is in response the to. The church shooting. Because, of course, the, 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 yes, right. the, the, the church shooting, because, of course, Senator John Cornyn represents the state of Texas, and it's to try to force uh, federal agencies and states to comply with the NICS database, make sure they're inputting the proper data that would prevent individuals who should not be getting guns mm -hmm. from getting guns. Another important point on all this that I think often gets missed, this isn't just a left versus R issue when we're talking about gun control. As Josh Crasher of the National Journal wrote after the Vegas shooting, there was also rural us uh, state Democrats, uh, senators who are running for re-election, who are also not talking about gun control measures. So it's also a geographical issue, depending on the state and depending yeah. on your constituencies as well. Trish, exactly. Yeah, just, it's common sense, right? Someone who and you know what that may mean, giving up some privacies here along the way, because the way the current law is, that health information doesn't get shared, can't get shared. In this case. It would have saved 17 lives had that information been shared. There's so a long everything. list of things I either missed or ignored. And on your left, once again, those are students in Washington, D.C. doing a lion outside of uh, the White House. We will keep you updated on that if there are any developments. But moving along, President Trump and House Speaker Paul Ryan sitting down for a high-stakes meeting on Republicans' agenda heading into the midterms. This is there appears to be new red flags for the Democrats. Details ahead on that. Plus, former Vice President Joe Biden reportedly tiptoeing towards a 2020 presidential run, whether a Biden bid could boost Democrats' chances or if it's just evidence the party's bench remains pretty weak. We'll debate. Meeting with House Speaker Paul Ryan at Mar-a-Lago over the weekend to discuss the GOP agenda moving forward. All of this as recent polling shows Republican tax reform has gained popularity since taking effect and could be a winning issue for the party in the midterms. Meanwhile, Democrats are hoping they can message against the law to win votes. In However, Republicans have painted House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi as out of touch, given her recent comments on the worker bonuses resulting from the new tax law.
In terms of the bonus that corporate America received versus the crumbs that they are giving to workers to kind of put the schmooze on is so pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to run that one over and over and over again because here's the reality, Kennedy. It's not crumbs. This is real money to a lot of Americans. And the more she's up there saying none of this matters to everyday folks, the more everyday folks are saying, but wait a second, yeah, it does. And if I'm doing better, it's not because of her. How can she rail against is an anticipation of the tax cuts that they're getting. So I'm sorry, if you don't have a lot of money, $2,500 is a lot of money. And it certainly is welcome at a time of year where a lot of people are in debt post holidays. Mm -hmm. uh, it, she's worth $100 million. And Marie Antoinette and her bobblehead, uh, you know, just, just going around flapping her guns, so incredibly out of touch. It's that kind of messaging that will do Democrats so much harm going into the midterms. It is quite possible for them to develop a positive economic message. This, oddly enough, is not that message. You know, Chris, it, election after election, I think what it comes down to is how do people feel about that candidate's ability to provide a secure economic future for one's family. And you look at what happened uh, in this go around, and we were talking about whether it's the Russians or whether it was just Hillary Clinton's inability to connect with people and to go to places like Wisconsin or Pennsylvania and campaign. It's a continuation, you see, of Hillary Clinton what Nancy Pelosi is doing right now. So come 2018. I would, I, I would caution Republicans this. Mitt Romney did better than uh, Barack Obama on the economy with voters in 2012. The exit poll was close, but it was unambiguous that they thought he was better at handling the economy and they still voted against him. You know uh, why though? Why? I'll tell you why. Was it Because the they were not confident that Mitt Romney would be able to deliver enough of a prosperous future. You know why? Because they didn't like him. You, they didn't like who well, he was. I, I think you're closer there. Uh, you, you may have seen more in the exit polls than I did, but I think Mitt Romney didn't connect and relate to people. I don't, right. I don't think that... He also ran from his wealth, which he, I thought was a bad idea. Exactly. And that's one thing President Trump doesn't do. With Definitely doesn't President do Trump's yeah. like, get on the train. Mitt's like, oh, this train <laughs> is a wagon. It's quite yeah. shabby. Yeah. It, the Orca program. There, there, are, there are many. There are many reasons. Uh, there, there are many reasons. <laughs> you uh, time. <laughs> but, but, we should remember this: persons, personalities, and people count. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Nancy Pelosi's greatest liability for Democrats and the Republicans better look out, because if I was Pelosi, I'd be thinking about doing a switch ruin about all. Is not going to step aside. We saw her. Uh, the she reason has, she has clung to power with with the tenacity oh, of exactly. But so she's not of leadership she's though. This is one thing that this, step is, aside, this is the though. thing that breaks this party, the Democratic Party, apart one more time. Because yeah. when Nancy Pelosi is out there talking about crumbs, it bothers people like Bernie Sanders and his supporters. Because he goes, "When did we become the party of the rich, where we're demonizing money that people are making?" Right. Elizabeth Warren has been put on 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 blast here, where she's been asked repeatedly why she's still calling these corporations bad when they're the ones giving out the increase in minimum wage, which liberals have demanded the government enforce for years, mm -hmm. and these bonuses. And so it not only it looks bad to the voters, but it also splits the Democrat Party again between the Nancy Pelosi's mm -hmm. with a $100 million net worth, Hillary Clinton, who also is very unrelatable and was looked at as someone who only cared about money and couldn't relate to the average person, and emboldens the part of their party that they've been trying to get rid of, including through no, the DNC. Right. Well, and, and I think the biggest thing from the Republican Party and the way they look at the tax reform law is the message is going to be, look at all this momentum. Look at increased paychecks. Do you want this to keep going? The individuals who are going to stop it is... Do you want this to keep going? The individuals who are going to stop it is the Democratic Party. And that's the message. The big question is, is that a driving force enough to get your base to turn out in a midterm election, which I, I is what you need to no, win? No, I, I, don't, I, I don't necessarily think it is. I think that they have become the party of no, and Republicans are becoming the party of prosperity. There's a likability factor that matters. And so I don't know how you get them out unless you convince them. And this is why you see the Democrats doing this over and over.